Well, it's not outside because it's uh, although the sun's out, it's uh, it's still a bit cool. I just got back from a uh, about a five six mile drive, and it's probably 50 outside, but the wind it's really windy. I'd say it's probably low 40, high 30 wind chill, and then you're moving. So uh, yeah, it was a cool ride, but I thought I'd just do a quick walk around, give you kind of an idea of what this is and how I got it. Um, what you're looking at is a reproduction. Now, I'm going to say it up front for those who die hard, love the old stuff that is original. I understand. Um, besides the little problems I've had with this, I could make this a daily driver uh, with very little work. It's uh, it's just so nice to have something that um, you know, you can don't have to worry about working on the old SU carburetors or whatever those were that come with these originally and uh, they may not have been that but whatever they were and uh, positive ground electrical systems and all the stuff that I mean they're cool uh, but um, you know this one is daily drivable and you know like I said it's going to take me a little work to get to that point because it's actually you know I, I've said this in one of the other videos the car is dad built this in 1986 um, took him I think it was close to nine months, six to nine months to build the car, um, start to finish. Worked on it, uh, you know, not every day, but pretty close to every day. And uh, it's really dusty, and I apologize for being so dirty. It's just, uh, you know, it's just winter. I didn't have it covered because I was moving stuff around, and then uh, had the boy in here working on stuff, and and uh, got very dusty. So I got I didn't do a clean, and I may do a video when it's all clean, polished up this spring. Like I said, when I get it out, but. I've been kind of telling you I was going to do it here for a few videos and in the past, so I thought I'd just go ahead and do it. And anyway, this is a 52 MG. Um, it is on a full square tube frame with a uh, Mustang tube Pinto uh, front, uh, you know, front end under it. So you know, it's got the rack, um, uh, manual rack and pinion. It's got uh, you know the coil over. I mean, it's got you know, it's this Mustang tube front end, the one that the hot rodders use there for a long time. At the time when Dad built this, it wasn't that hard to find those cars. Um, I think he he stripped three. He got a couple of them. One had a rod knocking in it. The other one um, was a rollover, and it still run a drove, but it was a rollover. And then I had a found an eighty wagon uh, that had a bad motor in it. And uh, of course, at the time, it wasn't that old, but a hundred thousand miles, they were wore out. You know, they were out of the seventies and eighties, but uh, um, anyway, so basically rear end, front end, motor, transmission, uh, most of the electronics, uh, meaning, meaning wiring harness, and the steering column are all Ford. Uh, everything else came in a box and uh, several boxes, crates, and they had built it from, when I mean, went in, loaded it out of the semi, it came out of uh, Fiber Fab, I think, believe was the name of the corporation that had these. I'm not even sure they're in business anymore, out of Florida. It came up on a semi up to Colorado, which is where we were living. Dad still lives there, but not in the same place. But um, anyway, we were living at the time, and uh, unloaded it in the street. Basically, got a, a frame that had surface rust all over it and boxes full of parts, and that's you know in a big instruction book which I have. And so anyway, he started building it. Um, it has uh, like the other video I said, it has a 2.3 Ford. Four cylinder motor, head was shaved 60 thousandths. It's got 10 and a quarter to one compression, maybe three quarter. I'd have to look to see what the Ford actually was, uh, the Pinto motor originally. Uh, of course, it's uh, it's got a header on it. It has a four speed manual. Dad don't believe in anything having an automatic if it's a sports car. He's got a Z3 BMW. I think I've said this before in other videos. And uh, of course, it's a six with a uh, five speed. Uh, turn another light on here. Anyway, this is supposed to be British race car green. Dad never liked the color. He thought it was more of a Hitler green is what he used to call it. Uh, the doors don't quite match the rest of the car, which means they were probably uh, done somewhere else. That's about the only structure you have in a side impact. It's just, uh, you can see the body's pretty thick right here. You know, it's probably inch and a half or so. And then the door is too, but you don't have much there. I mean, I would hate to get in an accident with this. Uh, the top is up. Uh, I usually do that in the winter time to keep it stretched out. It has a you know little deal that goes in it. Uh, 
uh, kind of hold it from blowing around and it gets really wrinkled up. So uh, I like to uh, put it up in the winter time to keep it stretched, um, stretched out. Doors are suicide, which are kind of cool. Uh, it makes it, now I'm not going to say a challenge to get in and out, but some people have a lot more trouble. I'm six foot tall. I can get in and out of a pretty, pretty decent, but there are some things that are kind of unhandy to use. Um, one, one of the biggest, and I'm sorry there's no light down here. He may or may not be able to see it. I don't have the rubber on the brake or clutch pedal because it kept falling off, but had to move them close together because these were really kind of designed to have automatics in them. And uh, so to put a clutch and a brake pedal because of the way, you know, this body angles down, there's just not much space there for a clutch pedal. Dad made it work, and I, I have a size 12 shoe. I can make it work, uh, but there's sometimes, if you're in some type of emergency, you know, you want to kick that thing in neutral pretty quick. And <laughs> use your foot to stop it, or you know what I'm saying, use your, don't worry about downshifting or whatever, just uh, kick it in neutral, because you try to put both feet on there in emergency, you're either going to hit both at the same time, or you're going to hit your feet at the same time, you're not going to hit what you want, so... Uh, there's little things there that you just learn to drive. You know, anything that's older is always a kind of a learning curve, but it's got a full set of gauges. Um, everything still works in the car like it's supposed to. The radio actually came out of a car I had in high school. It still works, but it's uh, kind of a typical Ford um, deal where the radio is on when the car is running. It uh, has a real tendency to uh, make a whining sound. Uh, it's kind of typical on these that use the resistor style ignition, especially points. Uh, I've seen, I've had ones that didn't have, still had electronic and did it too. It's something in an alternator or something, I'm not really sure. But um, anyway, uh, it's, like I said, it's real cool. It's fun to drive. It's, um, it's, it's pleasant for, you know, 30 to 45 minutes. And then if the sun's out and the top's down, you either get hot or if it's get, it's kind of like being, you know, riding a motorcycle. It's, uh, you know, it, it, it's kind of a, it, what you like, what you enjoy. And I've said this many times before, I'm a fair weather guy. I don't get to drive this as much as I want. Um, it now has, the speedometer does not read right. It actually reads fast uh, when you're, no, reads slow, sorry. Um, and it reads slow a lot. So when you're um, when you're running like 35 or 40, the speedometer shows you run like 50 or something. I mean it's it's off quite a ways, uh, but it's you know it's doable. But it's showing over just over 6,000 miles now. So reality with that far off, it's probably closer to 65 or you know 67.5 or something like that. And uh, you know for 30 years old and the parts were used when Dad put it on. Not everything, but a majority. You know he rebuilt the motor. Uh, but did not have it bored or anything, didn't have the cam changed. But, um, you know, it's still, it's got a little piston slap when it's cold. It's done that for many, many years. It's kind of a Ford thing. Um, that five speed I'm going to put in that Mustang, well, I may put in a Mustang, I'm not sure yet now, uh, was actually purchased to put in this car to give it an overdrive because the problem is this car was designed to go 55. So when you try to run 70, the thing is over 3,000 on the tack and it's, this motors are not balanced. They're not designed to run that fast that long. Not that I'd ever tell you. Know, my original plan was actually make it a day, you know, to where I could drive it on the highway. But as times go by and I get more vehicles, it's more of an in-town, you know, cruise and set and stuff. And uh, so that's kind of what we do. I mean, I never run a hot rod power tour in it. Uh, you know, maybe if it was a day deal and it was coming through this area, I might do it. But this is just not not it. Uh, the car to use for that. But it's fun to drive. It's uh, I use I let kids use it for prom. I think it's been in three. This last one was a failure. Um, I got it out, got it cleaned up, waxed it, and kid come to to drive it. And um, you know I make the kids drive it while I'm in there with them to make sure I'm not teaching them how to drive a stick. That's not my job. Uh, he didn't do bad. I did end up having to kind of teach him. The other two kids knew how to drive a stick. And um, anyway, he. Um, I told him, I said, no, it's got a new radiator, it's got a new water pump, it's thermostat, everything is new, just let it idle. Don't don't shut it off. And it was kind of warm. And he pulled up there, he was probably 30, 45 minutes early, and he didn't want to leave the car sitting there running that long. He shut it off, and it wouldn't restart. I had to leave work, come and rescue it, and um, I kind of felt bad because he ended up having to get in with some other people, him and his date, to uh, to get there. And they were fine with it, but it was his, you know, it was my friend's, 
his last kid's prom, and I really hated it. It did this, and uh, so that's why I thought, uh, you know, I'm going to get on this thing. I've just had other projects going. So anyway, it now starts and runs. It has a little skip every once in a while. I'm not really sure what that is. I'll have to deal with that in springtime. I would put electronic ignition in this, but it's so expensive to do. For some reason, uh, we're talking 375 to 450 for a distributor for the electronic. Uh, I told you about the conversion. I had trouble with it. I may try it again now that I actually found the original problem, which I've said on another video. But um, anyway, this is just kind of a quick walk around. I may this spring get it out, set up the camera somehow, and then just take it for a drive around town or whatever and stuff. So anyway, that's the car. Um, you know, it's uh, it's cool. Oh, there's a lot of people ask why it has two different color lenses in the front. Uh, Dad, when he ordered them, you could get either the clear or you could get the yellow. And he decided to get one of each because one was a driving light and one was a fog light. And uh, for the racing circuit, he thought that was kind of cool to see, you know, with it's got the screens, you know, covering the headlights and it's got the badging and stuff. So that's why he did that. Um, let me step on some stuff. I don't think you want, I don't think they work. I have never wired them up and I don't think Dad did either. So that's something I may do. Uh, the mirror that is on the, hanging there on that uh, piece of aluminum, that window frame. That's not supposed to be on there. The original mirrors, which I have, are supposed to be mounted here to the fender on both sides. Dad did not mount them because he was afraid during shows and parking lots and stuff that people would just try to tear them off. And uh, you know the fiberglass part of it is just weak. And that was something that I said in another video, and uh, but I don't know if I actually posted or not. Working on this can be a pain. The, you know the hood opens sideways, and. Um, you, so you can't work on it from the passenger side. The, everything sticks out too far in the front. You about can't work on it from the front real well. And this fender is so big and hangs off the side, you about can't work on it from the side. you really got to be careful because there's very little support on those and you don't want to break them. So working on it is just as much a challenge sometimes as some of the other parts of the, of the car. But it's cool. It's fun. Dad did it because he just wanted to. He wanted to know if he could build a car from parts and scrap and you know stuff laying around and out of the box and and uh, he did it and um, I got it from him about 11 years ago uh, he was wanting to get change up and he ended up buying that BMW that's not you're looking at leak air on the floor that was actually from the Mustang I had to change that thermostat again because I had a leak from the gasket and that was just from where I drained it up so it's not from this car uh, oh however this thing is leaking gas uh, so I'm gonna have to rebuild that carburetor <laughs> uh, anyway um, you know, Dad wanted something to go a different way, and, and I just could not see this go to somebody who uh, wouldn't appreciate it like I did. And and I feel kind of bad because I've never got it painted like I wanted to, the actual British race car green. And I and I was having trouble, like I said, getting it started. I think I've got this lined out now, and and uh, I'll probably do the electronic conversion someday. And, and uh, you know, we'll, we'll make it good. But anyway, this is what it is, and, and uh, you know, we'll talk to you guys later.